Hello, welcome back to another episode of Roll Initiative. My name is Dave, I'm a dungeon master that uh, gets together with a group of friends and plays D&D. &D. Alright, so we're going to get started here with a recap before we get going. Uh, last time we were together, uh, it was decided, Leah, that you were going to free your father, Frederick, from Drake Hagen. Um, you guys, before leaving Donnemark, <laughs> before leaving Donnemark, uh, you guys ran into a couple dwarves on a dock there. Uh, uh, said they were from the Iron Crag. Dwarfs, uh, expert building weapons. Uh, even spoke a little bit about flying ships. Um, you guys contracted them to not only fix the damages on the boat, but to armor it up a little bit. Uh, Scoon stayed behind to watch over the wyverns and the pup that is named Ruthie. Uh, while you guys headed out to rescue your father. Well, you guys left town. I purchased some horses. Even got. Uh, Brock to sit on the back of a very large uh, Clydesdale horse, Clydesdale. Uh, you made your way south, first hitting a very cool little wine town. Um, all halflings, uh, had some good wine. In fact, uh, Rowan, you were able to get just enough leftover in your uh, kegger to create a gallon of this wine yourself. Uh, you continued to head farther south where you ran into a couple soldiers uh, carrying a banner of the duchy. I uh, spoke to you that they are guards uh, for the prison. And Drake Hagen continued to head south to you got to Thorns Guard. Very interesting place. Uh, gambling, fighting pits, uh, kind of a very chaotic town. Um, it said it's the last stop that the guards make before they head to Drake Hagen. Uh, all right, you decided to fight this huge human. Uh, stood about six foot nine, they called him the wall. Got in a ring. Held your own for a while, but even for you, just the strength you never felt. Uh, the just rage. Uh, he ended up taking you down at the end of the fight, but you gave it a good fight. Uh, Rowan, you made your way to a gambling table of three guardsmen. Uh, played them, played some cards, played some dice. Um, ended up at the end, going all in. Uh, having made some dice of your own and managed to not only win some gold, but the keys for the entrance to the prison. Tricky. You were warned by this guard if you're here in two hours, problem. Yeah, you're going to take all your heads. Uh, and that's what we'll pick up from. Akari, you are flat down in the ring. As you watch this huge creature, the wall, now kind of go in the corner of this fighting ring, you just kind of sit there for a second, wiping his wounds. As the little half league says, uh, does somebody want to get this thing out of my pit so we can continue? We'll, we'll figure out the way to get down there, me and Brock and go. So Brock kind of just scoops her up. Um, you know she's completely unconscious, not reacting. Uh, as Brock picks her up her one leg, seems to be broken not only at the hip but at the knee, just kind of dangling as kind of carries her out. Brutus is still sitting over there in the corner? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to give him a look. See you soon. <laughs> kind of looks you, kind of stands up. <laughs> well, you kind of look and goes... And literally with Brock next to me, I'm like not afraid at all. Like, he kind of sits back down <laughs> and just kind of puts his head down. You can tell he's kind of regrouping for the next thing. His muscles and you know, tense up and flare. Rest up. So you guys exit out of this area? Leave him. Um, you get out of the tavern again, Brock is carrying Kari. Um, Back to the horses. Yeah, uh, at this point, you know, she doesn't seem to be breathing. Her breathing is very shallow. Um, you can see just the impact of it. In fact, I need a saving throw for you. Oh. I've already kind of related to Leah. Uh, I'm bringing you a patient. Like what? Okay, so. Um, what is it? I just rolled a natural one. Uh -oh, nice. That's a double failure. I'm dead. As you get outside, you get there as quick as you can. Kari does expire at this moment. Um, Brock kind of holds her as he's holding her. He looks and goes, 
as he kind of picks you up his shoulder. He kind of looks at you guys and jumps in on that Clivesdale as you could just hear ruckus coming. You could hear things inside the bar as you guys, I'm assuming, all get on your horses. Yeah. Yeah. You just begin to hightail it. You begin to hightail it. You see Brock is mastering his horse. He has her up here. Kari's horse is left behind. He just takes her and you guys just head out. Um, you travel for about to when I feel safe. You, uh, about two hours or so to where you can find a clearing on this road. Uh, some small pines to set at the base of this mountain as you kind of get over to there. Um, Brock kind of gets off the horse, kind of lays Kari down. And he kind of looks at all of you and starts hitting the ground. What? He keeps saying what as he's hitting it. There's this looks. You guys want to do? Yeah, Brock. What? What do we do now, Brock? I don't know. The spell's no good. Yeah, cure wounds is no good. Because there's no wound. No. No. We literally have to go to a town to find Check somebody for the resurrection, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah, there might be a faster way about that. Uh, should we use the portal? My time to be doing that because I uh, wasn't expecting this one. Can we get No one was. Yeah. Oh, um, it was the short term portal. You got that in the, your bag? The dimension the door? She's got the bag. Right, fair enough. Huh? She's got your bag? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I gave her everything when I walked far in. enough okay. to what? Um, everybody give me a perception. I know everything is kind of like wound up right now. And it's, just everybody give me a perception. Natural 20. Last year. Plus the heavy dice. I never use, but I can use them in the box. Yeah, 17. Alright. There's a little bit. 11. Okay. 24. Okay. Um, you guys in the franticness, and you see uh, Brock won't leave her side all. He's standing there, and you guys kind of just start looking for anything. You're scouting, you're looking, and you see what it swear to be just this uh, a small uh, cabin that sits off the road, uh, 200 feet away or so. You can see a chimney smoke coming out of it, uh, but it's the only house that is sitting there. Um, you swear, as you look a little farther behind it, you see what appears to be a, uh, a, a, an old abandoned temple or church or something like that sits even farther behind it. So you guys have the option of magic, uh, the cube, to attempt to use that. Uh, you can see what's in this house, but yeah. Uh, while well, you're kind of going to look that over, you, let's go over and check this out. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to check out why they go check, yeah, maybe, check out maybe the cubic gate? Out the bag and start check out the cubic gate. You're going to be the only one that's going to know how to oh, use okay. it. So you walk up to Kari, who's laying there. Still, you you take it and you reach in there and you're like, you're like, <laughs> it's a little box. You put it back in there. It's too small. It's never been brought back to your size. I can't it's small big. to make it bigger. So, right you now. guys make your way to this cabin. Right now. Um, cabin it is. You can see uh, movement happening inside of there. Uh, Ricky old cabin uh, kind of sits in the middle of nowhere. As you kind of look around this, this area more, it seems to be at one point this might have been a smaller town. A lot of the buildings have been broken down, collapsed, non-existent. Um, you do notice behind it does sit a very small church. Um, part of the roof caved in on it. Just old. Um, you're at the door. What do you guys want to do? Is there any symbols on the door? Like, you can tell what religion it was? No. Just seems to be a cabin. And you can ahead. see movement inside. I'm going to go ahead and knock on the door. We don't have time to be no. thinking around. Good. Yeah. You see the door kind of opens up. Uh, you see a very old uh, elven woman. Uh, came brown tattered robes. Um, standing there. Um, kind of can, I, can I do for you? 
uh, we have a friend that's hurt very bad. Can you be of any assistance? My other friend's too nice, hurt real bad. No. Dead. Dead. As you see this, I won't kind of step back and clasp a uh, medallion around her neck. Uh, kind of holds it. She releases it. You notice right away, looking at it, you've seen this before. And you're thinking, where have I seen this? And it's the same symbol that Skinny she wears around her neck. This uh, upside down triangle with just a bit of mist that rises above it. Uh, never really got to ask her what that was. Uh, but same symbol as she clutches it. Where? Who? Where is this dead person? We call out to Brock to run over. Scoops her up. <laughs> Runs up, he sees all the... Look as he's running. He's nice, it's okay. okay. Bring her in. Kind of examines her. How long has it been? Uh, She's been dead long. Hours. No. Uh, two hours. Follow me. As Brock kind of picks her up, she walks outside to this old church temple. It kind of opens up the doors. Immediately, just dust kicks up everywhere. But you do see an altar that sits up on there. Put it up there. It's... She looks at all of you. I need you all to wait outside. And Brock's kind of like, it looks over at you guys. Friend! I'm not sure if he's gonna leave. Let's go, Brock. You kind of see this woman kind of. Let her try. She kind of collapses for a moment, just kind of waves her hand across them. <laughs> Walks outside, you guys, as these doors just close. Stand there for about 10 15 minutes. Doors open. And Kyrie is standing there, weak, but alive. You have three health points. Now you gotta do your spell. <laughs> Can I cast Cure Wounds? Yeah. Okay. So I will go ahead and cast Cure Wounds, which is. Plus my spell. Seven. What? Twelve. I, uh, I was proud and thought I could not take this brute. I want your pride, honey. It's got me killed once already. Next time you might not be so lucky. I appreciate your help. Thank you. What can we do to repay you for this debt? Pay it forward. How many? Thirteen. Twelve. Twelve. Pay it forward. Simply pay it forward and keep an eye on this one. I've never seen an elemental speak common in my life. So you almost be very important to him. Go make foolish decisions. She kind of just walks away from you guys, goes back to her cabin, walks in, and just closes the door. Guys, getting back on the road? Yeah, we don't really have a choice. We feel we have guards after us. Let's go, Kari. You can run on the back of my horse. You're moving slow, but you have enough health points. But man, your right leg still is like hurting like a bitch. It's just like, oh, you know, it's healing, but it's like, oh, you can't, you don't have a horse anymore. Uh -uh. So as Brock just kind of grabs you now by your shoulder gently, uh -huh. sits you right down in front of him. Oh, oh so it's just acting right like a bunch of people Brock's who, uh, right this right ain't our first time bringing somebody back from the dead, so. Hopefully it's the last, though. Getting a little tired of this game. Sorry, yeah. guys. Give you a health push. No, I got it. So, you guys head. Oh, sir, travel about another three, four hours. Um, um while while we're riding, I'm gonna cast kill okay. again. Okay, right, going. Um, you guys head travel for about three or four hours. Uh, you can see now to the east. Um, a road. Um, you come to the the fork here, where you look down this road and. About 200 feet ahead, you see this very large wall. Spans a wow, good thousand feet across. It's just huge. Um, you also see in the sky the vultures flying in the distance. Vultures that are swooping down and swooping up as you watch. 
but you're right at the fork of this road. Um, you know this is Drake Haven. As you begin to head down this road, you get close, you see what these vultures are doing. Uh, you come upon men, women, um, nailed to pieces of wood. They're just on the sides of this road. Uh, vultures coming down, picking parts of their flesh off as they fly up. Uh, you now come about 50 feet within this wall. You can see an entrance, two wooden doors. You see a guard here and a guard here. Probably about 40 feet apart. Kind of watching. As you look farther down, you see these guards spaced down. Are there more doors along the thing or just one set of doors? You see one main entrance to this area. How late is it? Mm, you know, the sun's starting to rise at this point. It's probably a good seven in the morning. Okay. So the sun's starting to okay. come up. How would you like to go about this road when you have a key? You have a key or keys? Keys. 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 There's multiple keys. Yeah. How many? There's three keys on that key. Alright. Should we go around and see if there's any other yeah, what if we access? Can we just flank the wall and see if we find any other entrances? Give me stealth checks. Everybody, oh, we'll I can use together. that, so, right? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll all go together. You know, that or Robert can just kind of do his own. Unless you just want to do it, Robert. Yeah, yeah Robert, if you just want to do it, you can do it. Yeah, why, yeah, why don't you just do all it? Alright, I have, uh, starting in the ninth level, you have advantage on a stealth check if you move no more than half your speed. Okay, so you want to do a slow? Yeah. Which you would anyway. Okay, so Alright, so give me, you roll two 20s. Two 20s and you're, if you're proficient in stealth, you get your proficiency die with it. So, you so can I give him no. take some bardic inspiration too, which is it? D10. D10. But you can choose to oh, use a natural 20. Oh. There you go. <laughs> okay, matter. so you scale the wall within about a, as you guys are all kind of hiding back. Along this road, um, you have the bodies that are nailed in there, but there's also like this shrubbery line behind them where you're able to kind of hide between rocks and um, small yeah. trees and if shrubs that are there. We're all conquered down. Does he just look like part of the scenery? Oh, you can't even just surf. All right. Um, Big boy. You don't notice anything, any other entrances, but because of that roll, um, you kind of make your way very quietly back to those main doors. And just for the heck of it, take it from those keys. And it unlocks it. No trap, just unlocks it. Alright guys, I got the, I got the door open. This is just the main front one. Though. Yeah. What should we do? Should well, we no, should we Kari, I think you, really? you should stay outside and keep watch and let us know if there's anything suspicious. If you see a pack of guards coming up. I'm also, I think, gonna stay outside because we can only spot the two guards right now up top. We should really. Like, you went should... all the way around? Well, not the whole thousand feet. You went as far as. I mean, otherwise you're. Well, that was all we've seen. I went a little bit of guards down one side. Within a forty feet range. Like that was forty feet from that one. So no, I'm good. All guards. Every I, got, feet. I got pistols. Yeah, guards every forty feet. Aim all right. Them. I'm. Go when... I'm gonna go in. Yeah, because you know what you're doing. Okay. Are you going? Stay. I'll understand? walk around and see what's happening around the rest of the area that he didn't get to. Well, it's a thousand foot wall. I mean, as you open, the doors opened. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll go in. Yeah. Everybody, give me self checks. And actually, yeah, everybody, because you guys are hiding back there. And, yeah. Oh, that's a Seventeen. Thirty-one. Seventeen. Twenty-five. Fourteen. Good. Seven. Okay. Um, right. You kind of notice, you guys, as you're kind of hiding back there, and you kind of got your pistol cocked. These guards. I have a certain arrogance and a certain um, laziness about them. As they're kind of like playing games, you see like one pick up stone, kind of thrown across the wall, try to hit the other one. They are just totally not taking this that seriously, perhaps because nope. there's a wall and also a huge prison, so they're a little laxed with their job. Um, you guys open up these doors, you make it inside, and it's exactly how it was described. You see maybe 10, 12 shacks. And I mean like shacks, small, a little bigger than shed you put in the backyard. Just very little homes. You see another establishment, slightly larger, where you can see uh, guards been kind of walking out, half not really with it, and makes a way to one of these 
homes where you immediately hear um, shrieking from women yelling, um, very just disruptive environment. Um, you see the prison that sits on your right hand side. Um, right now, as you look, there's one guard kind of standing there. Well, you can see on the far corner of the building, the other one basically back to you guys, relieve himself, kind of standing. There's one's kind of standing in front of the door. So that's what you got, what you guys want to do. And this is about 40 feet away from it. So the one taking a, a whiz, is he near anybody or is he pretty much by himself? I think you're out there and you wouldn't see it. You're outside. Yeah. Then you stay outside with him? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, never mind. So, so you watch the guards. Is the question? guard that's peeing, is, is anybody else near him or there, we only see There's two, only two guards. guards? There's only two. There's only two. But it's the ones that I But you guys can relate no, back to this. Two down. up and then two down. Inside. Kind yeah, of, yeah, inside or, there's the one. Now, now, real inside. quick, I'm just going to whisper to them. What are the? Can you tell what they're armed with? Because I don't know if I can see what they're armed with up there. Uh, looks like a long sword uh -huh. uh, uh, and a long bow on her back. Uh, you swear you can also see maybe a dagger. So you got long sword, dagger, bow, quiver. Um, armor pretty basic. It appears to be like more of a leather studded type of armor they're wearing. Um, you also notice on the door. Uh, one of the banners that's kind of in the ground there, but kind of waves the duchy's emblem. All right, so you, wanna, you wanna take one, I'll take the other, and we'll try to go knock them out? Yeah. I wanna walk up behind the guy that's peeing and pop him in yeah. the back of the head and knock him out. Quieter the better. But, you know, I got your back. Give me a stealth you. Yeah. At this point, they are both about 80 feet away from you. The three of them, that's about the distance they are. Okay. So she's gonna go try to take the I'm just watching for a reaction from the ones up top. Nine. Nine? That's yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What was yourself? Right. Yeah, because it's group. You guys are working together. And are you with them following them too, or are you staying behind? What are you doing? No, I'm just like, I, uh, well, I, I, I didn't go up behind them to attack them. Okay, so you're staying back. On stealth? I'm Only when I did that special thing. Right? Which was moving at? Half your movement, but to get closer. I'm just going to Alright, so 8 and 4 is 12, plus 5, 17. You added 9? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so, which, who's taking who? I'm taking uh, the guy. She's taking the pee, pee guy. Okay. Back is to me. Pee guy. Okay. Yeah. So, you kind of creep along the wall as the one is standing there watching the door. And you can tell that he kind of screams across the guards. As you can see, one of the guards kind of just pull this woman unwillingly. Mm -hmm. and, Save it for me when you're done with her. I get off in a couple more hours. As he just kind of laugh back and forth and he drag her. So, he's, you get up to him completely unaware. So you will have, uh, actually, give me initiative, everybody. Okay. Everybody can roll everybody. part of it if they want. Yeah, because everybody can be part of this. Roll initiative. In fact, it could happen that way. So we're, we're at a sunrise then. Yeah. Okay, 20, 25. 24. 20. Okay. Actually, nice, nice roll. 15 to 20? 19. Wow. 10 to 15. Nine. Wow. Well, I'm taking you below nine. Yeah. Damn, Will. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Rowan, this yeah. person has not gone in this ship yet, which means you also get your assassinate. So, as long as it's a hit, it's double damage, which means you'll get 10d6 plus whatever weapon you're using. Jesus Christ. Okay. All you gotta do is hit. I just wanna shoot, shoot a poison dart. Silent, but so deadly. So you just <laughs> shoot a blowgun or a yeah, arrow? Yeah, blow, blowgun. Okay. Super silent. Yeah, give me that. All you gotta do is hit. And you're proficient with it, so proficient, 20, and your dex modifier. Twenty. Twenty hits. On the critical. Give me ten D six and I think it's two D four for the dart, right? Yep. How does that work? Do your uh, poison dart turn? Poison dart is two D eight, yeah. Okay. Oh geez. so it's ten D six and forty eight. <laughs> is it two D eight or one D eight for the dart? Two D eight. Two D eight. Yeah, it's, it's forty eight to ten D six. 
So go ahead and roll those out. <laughs> okay. I think you're you're gonna be okay. That guard's just gonna have a heart attack yeah. and feel over. Remember, these are just human, you know, elven guards. I'm sorry, but they're, you know. As it hits you like, oh, because it just kind of scrapes along the side of his neck and keeps going forward. But it hits him as it scrapes. He goes, ah. <coughs> falls over dead as this guard continues. <laughs> and as you're kind of getting ready to walk up, you watch this guy kind of just, he kind of stiffens up for a minute and goes, <laughs> and falls completely <laughs> forward. And you're kind of just getting ready and you see Ron back here with a blowgun like, two oh, thirds. And it, yeah. So you got these two guards down for the moment. Okay. What y'all doing? Well, I'm gonna take. But I'm assuming this is being communicated to you guys. I hope so, as I will tell you. Time to hide the bodies. I'm gonna go ahead and actually take the cloak that's on the guard that just fell over okay. peeing and put it over myself, so I kind of blend in. You also don't see where these small type of helmets. Don't you have like so. invisibility? D- don't burn a spell. Okay. What you want? I mean, it's okay. Actually, I can. Well, I was gonna say I can use the heart, but then I'd have to play it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm just gonna take the cloak, just kind of you do the same? myself a little sure. bit, so and I'm gonna of... go ahead and kind of move the body like okay. out, so of the way out of the way. So we'll, we'll push give me two ahead. quick stealth checks again, guys. So it's completely obvious that there's naked guards down the horrible and unconscious. I think all my good rolls happen with that with that fight we had. That. That's my dinner. <laughs> Twelve. Natural twenty. No problem. As you kind of hide these, now you guys kind of take your place and you're right at this front door. You're right at the entrance to this prison. All right, can I try one of the other two keys? Yep. I have you? And no, no movement from these guys. Yeah. Okay. Try open the door. You get in there. Click it. It works. It's a lot. Push the door. All right, in. we're gonna push the door open and go inside. Okay. After we push the door open, we're gonna turn back and we're gonna lock it. Okay. So we locked ourselves in, but we have the keys still. Okay. Are, are you guys all hanging back? Or are you here hanging back here? Okay. So hey, you guys also back. Really, that's me. So yeah. Any kind of a small trap. So you're in the thing. you're in the pit area where we kill where we kill the two guards. Yeah. Keep an eye out. But you could like okay. you know assemble disassemble. Yeah. Just in case somebody came through, they'd get a little something. You'd have a little. I have that trap that we we. Took apart that had the arrows that face outwards. Okay. From the so it's still a shrap that's ready to go. You just got to like install it. Yeah. You want to install? Give me a deck check. Slide it in. Plus ten. It's always just plus ten when you're doing the slide yep. in check. Yeah. Got a huge so Thirty. Yeah. Yeah, you get right in there. It takes you about two minutes or so. But you're able to get it in there. Um, immediately when you guys enter, I know you both have dark vision, uh, but this place is pitch black. Uh, immediately, the screams of madness ring through here. Um, you hear some people screaming for their gods, um, others screaming for death. Uh, stinks, sweat, decay, rotten food, human waste. Um, with your dark vision, you're still able to see enough where you look down this, you can see one long hallway goes down. Uh, you can see torches hang there. They're just not light. Uh, as you enter to, you hear screaming. Sounds to be coming from a woman. Um, echoing down this hallway. Um, as you kind of make your way down this corridor, you can see at the very end, good. 60 feet away from you, on the side, 
seems to be a torch, a room that's lit. Uh, you hear men screaming things like, stop fighting, you wench. And the other one saying, I like fighters and all, but you see no guards. You come in and you see nothing, almost like it's just a pastime. No, no one's being guarded. You kind of look through these cells and you see, you see men that are just broken, huddled in a corner. You, um, you look at other ones and you swear to three cells you pass by, they're just dead. Not being paid attention to at all. You also hear something, a voice that echoes through here. I hear the flowing water calling to me. It's my only way to ever be free. Beyond this cage awaits for me. The water below to set me free. And you hear a very distinctive laugh. And you know right away that's your dad's voice. And he says the poem again and again. Chuckles as you find your way through. You're getting closer now to this room. Um, with what's going on, and then you can see this door, this guard's room, just kind of slammed shut. And you kind of look, and you look, and there you see, sitting in the middle of the cell, Rocky, old man, long white beard, long white hair, and he says it again, I hear the flowing of the water calling to me, it's my only way to ever be free, beyond his cage it waits for me, the water below has set me free. As he kind of laughs to himself again, and he's sitting there, and you know this is your dad. Oh, great. So, what you want to do? That's just kind of rocking. All right, so no guards still. All right, so is there anybody in this cell with him? Sit in the middle of the cell. Third, use the third key. All right. Try to sell. It seems that the last one he tries more of a skeleton type key. You kind of look at it, no, it probably works for majority cells, all kind of geared off the same kind of skeleton key. You open it, swing it open, and he's still rocking, saying that poem over and over again. And he kind of chuckles to himself each time. What you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go up to him and, and get him to look at me and. He looks say, up. Yeah. And you see, you know, it's your dad's eyes. He goes, Leah, what are you doing here? <laughs> Leah. Yes. I hear the flowing of the water calling to me. I understand, Dad. I'm trying to get you out of here. Do you want to? Do you want to? That leave? is the way out, Leah. The water below. Where is the water? The water how do we get to the water? Do you know how to get Can't there? You hear it? Jump in the toilet. Give me perceptions. Flush. Listen for a second, and you swear you do hear what sounds like coming from somewhere farther down this hall. This, you swear you hear a current once while as he kind of stands up. Follow me, and he says the poem again. As you're following him, he gets down to this end of this hallway. He touches on the wall, and as you guys kind of stand there, you can hear a current coming from somewhere down below. Give me a perception. He looks at you and goes, Leo, old passages used during the war. 20. Do you remember I told you about Lord Brayton? Mm -hmm. This was never like this before. And he kind of looks for a second, just blanks out and starts to hum that melody of that. What'd you get? 20. You kind of feel around there and you feel some air coming through. Slight breeze. So you kind of push on it. And there's a staircase that heads downward. As soon as you open that door, you hear this current stronger. This flowing of water. Which is you two and him. Outside. Yeah, let's just, we'll meet back up with him. The problem is, is that she's now trapped. In Not trapped. She's just watching what's going on, guarding. But she doesn't have a she doesn't have a key to get out of the. I, I only, no, I she's not in the prison. She's not in the prison. Oh, she's not. No, in the, the gates are open. No, yeah, you're fine. It's just two of you that went to prison. Yeah. And she, she stayed outside. Yeah, she's in the town. Oh, she, that's right. They're still all right, within right. 500 feet of you. 
Okay. So they can All hear right. kind of what's going yeah. on. In fact, right. you guys hear through your headphones just pull over. You want to do what I need to do with the trap? All right. I thought that she was somewhere else. Okay. So, we come so we're going we're gonna to keep going. Oh, maybe we just take the river and come meet you out yeah. somewhere outside. Well, maybe. Is that what you're going to try yeah. and do? Yep. Okay. So you guys take him. You walk him down. Are you going to close that door? Yeah. You kind of very quietly. Give me a stealth again. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to start moving. Well, my question is, are, do you guys hear any water? Tell if there's water nearby. I'll give you the opportunity in a second. All right. What'd you get? 16. Yeah, you close it. There's a staircase that leads downward. As you guys kind of take it, your father... Kind of take a lead with lead with this. Very excited as he keeps saying now this pump even like with more energy. As you get to the bottom of the staircase, you see a flowing river. Head south. Uh, you see an old dilapidated dock. Uh, one of the rowboats completely just rotted. The other one seems to be pretty decent. As he just kind of just walks. He's, Leah, come. You have to be quiet. <laughs> Hey guys, we're gonna jump in a boat. We're not sure where it's gonna take us, but yeah. we think it'll shoot us out um, some some backside of the. Then you're all here, but further south. Yeah. yeah. Leah, dear, um, are you sure this is your father? I'm sure. You can give me this side if you want. Okay. Just to verify, but you know in your heart his eyes. Okay. But know what you're thinking. I'd be clever as hell. Twelve. Okay. Oh, oh. right. I mean, you just know as you get in a boat and you kind of touch his face, and you remember a scar when he used to be clean shaven and kind of sat across down this way. It's there. His eyes. He just seems a little. Um, Good words. A little prisoner of war. Yeah. Um, what was the nickname your daddy used to call you when you were a little kid? That only he would know. <laughs> Dad, Justin. Dad would used to call me when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> On the spot. My little artist. Because you're the only one out of the family that actually chose music. The rest of them went with the weapon making and all that. You know that. You're the only one that really went that way. Okay, so. You get in this boat. Um, you notice as you, you start to row through it, you have uh, rough waters at you kind of keep rolling through it as he just kind of sits there. You notice his rocking starts to slow down slightly as he stops saying the poem. You guys see ahead of you about 100 feet where you can see light coming through where this cave ends as you push through. You guys all give me a, if you want to know if there's water around there, give me a nature check. Survival. Survival. Survival? Yes, survival. Because you're going to distract a little bit. She would have preferred nature. No, I'm, oh, I'm good with survival. Oh, okay. Yeah, 21. 24. Yeah. 13. Okay. So together, uh, Orion, you kind of like, you hear what's going on, you kind of get out of there. Um, and as you're walking out, part of you just wishes you have no spells just to burn this place down because all you see is just abuse and Part of me wishes what is that I had what? Spell. Just to burn it down. You have this anger that rages in you. I'm mad. And as you get this feeling, you immediately go, you feel this pain. Or <laughs> Orianna, you immediately feel this pain across your shoulder blades. As you start feeling this rage, it takes you down for a moment. And you, uh, and you feel on your back, and you feel like oh, a wound. And you feel this side a little bit of a wound too, as you just feel this rage. You stand up and you make your way out. You guys, as you're all together now, push your way through. You head a little farther south where you see a river flows through. As you look down this river, through the exit of this cave, you see a rowboat with not two people, but three. Leah, Rowan, and Frederick Silverleaf. And that's where we won tonight's game. Hugger. Oh. Okay. Boulder Dash. Good game, gone. guys. Baller dash. <laughs> hey, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and watch us next week. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Drop them bombs. <laughs>